Hello, Tab Nation. It's Tom, and today we are doing arrays in V2, version 2 auto hotkeys. I've done a video in version 1, uh, so why not do it in version 2? Uh, so let's just start with, you know, what is an array? It's basically just like a list with different values, and the values are signed by the position they are and the order. Uh, so, you know, 1, 2, 3 is what we're doing today. Now, why do we maybe want to use arrays? Uh, one of the best reasons is just it's cleaner looking. Uh, we know that everything in this variable has to do with maybe a category. As you see, this has to do with like food. Um, but yeah, so here's one way that you can use, you know, variables. So we got one, two, three. Well, doing this, we're creating three variables. And then we have a message box uh, just saying variable number two. You know, this is four lines of code. Four lines of code. We're doing it this way by using an array. We're still doing the message box. We still have all the same information that we want into that list or as a variable. But we're only using two lines of code. Now, in this situation, it's not super, you know, that big of a difference. But... You know, if you have a huge amount of data that you're using, arrays are going to be very helpful. Uh, you could potentially take, I don't know, 50 lines of code and turn it into only two lines of code like here. So you could have this go up to like 50 different items just in this list here. So, you know, it, it can have big effects depending on the amount of data you're using. You know, two lines of code versus 50 lines of code. Heck yeah, you should do that. Uh, so that's one of the biggest reasons of why we would want to do it, at least in my opinion. There's obviously other reasons. Let me know what kind of things you use this for and how it's benefit you versus, you know, just assigning every single one a variable that's visible, which can be good and bad too at the same time. Uh, but yeah, so this one's pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and run this um, test. Uh, what did I call this one? Test three. We're going to obviously run it into V2. Yes, I know you can make it automatically run, but for the sake of video, I want to show you that I am running it in V2. Uh, so there we go. That's our first message box here. Variable 2, variable 2 equals broccoli. All right. But now we're going to jump down to the next one. And same thing, message box, variable 2. Obviously, the formatting is a little different from V1 uh, with as far as putting like the square brackets, uh, stuff like that. But as you can see, that's pretty much how it works. Also, our message boxes... Uh, we can uh, do it this way when we're calling the actual name. There's two ways to do call upon the variable you that want, depending on what you are doing. Um, <clears throat> something else to point out is, um, so down here we got two. You can use a negative number. Um, so if I were to do uh, negative one, so if I did one here, we're going to get this as our uh, response for that uh, message box, asparagus. But if we did a negative one, we're actually going to get it in reverse, basically. So we would actually, our answer for the message box would be cucumber. So it would take whatever that is. So this would be negative one, negative two, negative three. Without the negative one, two, three. Hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so that's how that would work um, with that. And just saying, you know, message box asparagus and broccoli. Uh, cucumber. Oh, I ran the wrong script. That's why that was being weird. Um, so yeah. Broccoli. And there we go. Cucumber. So as you see, I used the negative one. So let me close those scripts. Okay, I don't have any scripts running. Good. So another thing you can do is uh, just to show you some other options is uh, we're going to do the same thing basically here with uh, creating our array variable. Obviously, you can change the uh, VAR, obviously I'm not being very creative here. You should get it a much more specific title. You know, we could call this, um, you know, like food list or shopping list. You know, don't just name it variable, but <laughs> for the sake of the video, it's just easy. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to declare, you know, everything here. We're going to do a loop though. And then we're going to do VAR dot length. So what it's doing is it's checking this, the length, one, two, three. So it's going to loop three times, and then we're going to do message box, some text here, which goes in quotations, box one equals, 
<clears throat> and then we're going to call the variable. So we're doing variable and then a in underscore index within square brackets. If you don't know what a index is, it's a built-in variable to auto hotkeys that basically just counts for you. So every time that thing hits, it's basically like one, two, three. So that's kind of cool and helpful. Um, so yeah. And then down here, you can also do it this way. Message box, box equals, uh, box two equals variable, and then in square brackets, the actual one you're calling upon. So this one will basically walk through every step of the variable where this one's calling a very specific one. So I did close my scripts. Let's go ahead and run that one. That one's just called test two. Very creative with my names, obviously. So we're going to run this in version two. So there's our first box, box one. This is asparagus. Obviously we're looping. So then next is broccoli, then cucumber. Now it's reached it and knows the length is done. It's going to move on to our last message box there. And as you see, box number two, variable two is broccoli. <clears throat> So that is a um, very brief intro into arrays in version 2 auto hotkeys. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot more options you can do, but this was meant to be really just a very basic intro. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm clearing my throat. It's getting a little fuzzy there for some reason. Um, so obviously, um, you can go into the documentation on the AutoHawk Hotkey website, search for arrays. You can change between V1, V2. Uh, I did a V1, so if you're looking for that, just search for the version 1 of this. And it'll be under my intro playlist, by the way, which you all should check out and definitely make sure you know at least most of the stuff. But yeah, um, so here's basically what we covered today in this video is basically just this little tiny section so like I said, a very basic intro. There's a few things too that you know I could mention, but you just read it if you want to get into details. But as you see here, we got the table of contents under the intro. <clears throat> and there's quite a bit of stuff here. Um, so if you guys want to see another video where I actually go a little bit more in depth versus just a very basic intro, hit the like button. It lets me know if I get 30 uh, view or likes on a video, I tend to do a follow up if it's possible, which this one is definitely possible. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, just let me know and I'll do one uh, basically just explaining all these extra uh, things you can do. You know, there's like call, creates a new array containing the specific values. Clone, returns a shallow copy of an array. So there's a lot we can do. Um, as you can see, there's tons of uh, things we could do as a part two to this video. So yeah, make sure you subscribe. Always throwing out videos on auto hotkeys or just automation in general. And I will see you all on the next one. Good day.